This is Frank DeMora from the End Times Research Ministry. Today is October the 20th of 2015. I'd like to welcome you to go over to my website where you can download my book, The Last Chronicles of Planet Earth, today for free. Now, recently in a lot of my posts, I've been warning you about two wars that have not been fulfilled yet. And I also tie in Zechariah chapter 12 as how this war can start. And the first war that I've been talking about, as you see on the screen, is the Psalm 83 war, which the Lord gives us every detail about that war as to who is going to be coming against Israel in the last days. And you'll see it numbered 1 through 10. I'm not going to go through all of the names. All you have to do is freeze the frame and you can look and see that the names on the left hand side right next to the numbers they're the old testament names and then on the right hand side as you see for example the tents of edom are today's palestinians and southern jordanians i'm just showing you who they are because this war hasn't happened yet and of course there's the other war that will take place after the psalm 83 war and that war is going to be the ezekiel 38 war and if you see in the left hand corner you could do the same thing you could freeze this frame and look all the participants that the lord told us was going to attack israel and the ezekiel chapter 38 and 39 the description of that war now for the last couple of weeks i've been showing you the importance of zechariah chapter 12 verses 2 and 3 where the lord revealed to us that in the last days jerusalem would become the center of all the problems. I'm going to read this verse. Bear with me if you heard this before. I do have new people and it's going to be very important, especially as you see the news that I'm showing you. Because I'm making connection between God's warning and what's happening currently. And you're going to see they match identical. Zechariah chapter 12 verses 2 and 3. Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling unto all people round about, when they shall be in the siege both against Judah and against Jerusalem. And in that day I will make Jerusalem a burdensome stone for all people. It means everyone. All that burden themselves with it shall be cut in pieces, though all the people of the earth are gathered together against it. So very, very precise information, Jerusalem is going to be a major problem in the last days. And at the bottom line is everybody's going to be coming against Jerusalem. Is it in the news today? If we're very close to seeing the Lord's second coming, then obviously we should see this prophecy in our sights. And it is. Take a look at this. Keep in mind, the news that you're seeing, this breaking Israeli news, is not from a prophecy site. This is from a news agency out of Israel. And it says the latest news, biblical perspective. The headline to this report, in fulfillment of biblical prophecy, the world turns against Jerusalem. This came out today, October the 20th, 2015. Not only is the headline identical to what we see in Zechariah, they even quote, look at the scripture, they quoted Zechariah chapter 12, verse 3, the one that I just read to you. Years ago when I wrote my book, The Last Chronicles of Planet Earth, the first edition, in that book I talk about Zechariah 12, 3, and how in the future you need to keep your eyes on Jerusalem because I believe that Jerusalem is going to be the center point that is going to start a major war and that's exactly what's taken place and over the years this idea of ownership of east jerusalem where the two jewish temples used to stand and now they're gone and now where the dome of the rock which you see in the background here this is the third most holy site for the muslims and the Temple Mount area today is a powder keg ready to go off. And there's been a lot of riots been going on in the last three weeks because of this Temple Mount area. So Zechariah, under God, telling them that Jerusalem was going to be a burdensome stone. Now, that's what we're seeing, the identical, I mean, this is identical 
from what we're seeing in the scripture to what's going on in their writing about it. The article says this, as seen through the multiple recent events, the nations of the world are increasing their efforts to weaken or remove Jewish sovereignty in Jerusalem. Is this a fulfillment of Zechariah 12, 3's prophecy that at the end of days the nations of the earth will gather against Jerusalem? So this news agency is asking the question. In the 1920s, the Muslims began calling the Kotel Western Wall the Al Barak Wall and the Kotel Plaza the Barak Plaza. According to Muslim tradition, Al Barak was a horse with wings that carried Muhammad back and forth between Mecca and Jerusalem. Historically, the Kotel is part of the outer western retaining wall of the second holy temple that was destroyed in the year 70 CE. It has been sacred to the Jews and Christians for 2,000 years. The millennia long holiness of the Kotel derives from its association with the Temple Mount where the two previous holy temples stood. Recently, the Palestinian Authority, sponsored by six Arab states, submitted a resolution to the UN Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization, UNESCO, seeking to claim the Kotel as a Muslim holy site, wrestling the Kotel from the Jewish nation and claiming it as its own. In the proposal, the PA refers to Jerusalem as the occupied capital of Palestine. Israel's foreign minister vowed to fight the resolution, saying that it is a clear endeavor to distort history in order to erase the connection between the Jewish people and its holy site and to create a false reality. Riyad Mansour, the PA envoy to the UN, has also asked the UN Security Council to step in to step in and assist Palestinian Arabs. Speaking to reporters after a Security Council meeting on Friday, October the 16th, painting Israel as the aggressors in the current wave of Islamic terrorism in Israel, Mansour said. The situation warrants providing protection for our people in the occupied territory starting in the old city of Jerusalem and al Asq Mosque. In this statement, Mansour clearly refers to the entire old city of Jerusalem as occupied territory. Now see, in the prophecy in Zechariah, he didn't give us the specifics as to why they're going to be going into Israel in that holy city and make it a burdensome stone. But now in this generation where the prophecy is coming together, we can see clearly the reasons why the world is coming against Israel and this Temple Mount area, this holy site. And a lot of it has to do with the conflict between the Palestinian and the Israelis. Ownership, specifically about this Temple Mount area. In response to Mansur's claim that his people are being threatened by Israel, the French newspaper, Le Figaro, reported on Saturday that France is drafting a proposal to station international troops on the Temple Mount. Israel's UN representative Danny Danton said that Israel will never agree to allow an international force to occupy the site of the two biblical temples. International involvement in the status of Jerusalem is also coming from the US and the EU. Current US engagement is evidenced by U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry's efforts to clarify the meaning of the status quo on the Temple Mount through a series of meetings with Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu, Jordan's King Abdullah, and PA President Hamad Abbas. The European Union also has a hand in attempting to clarify the status of the Jewish and the Muslim presidents on the Temple Mount as EU Foreign Minister Federica Mogherini is set to meet with Netanyahu in Berlin later this week about the issue. Scholar, author, and end times expert Rabbi Pinchez Winston believes that there is a great spiritual significance of the tug of war over Jerusalem. If you look at a map of Europe, Asia, and Africa, it is amazing that the tiny little Israel is like the hinge pin that holds them all together. It really looks like the center of the world, and Jerusalem is its center, he told Breaking Israel News. Kabbalistically, according to Jerusalem mystical tradition, Jerusalem is even the center of the universe. 
because that is where the light of God descends to the world before being shared with the rest of mankind. This is why so many nations and religions cherished and demand the holy city, even if they're not conscious of this. As every parent knows, little is more burdensome than when several children desperately want the same thing, he explained. When it comes to Jerusalem, how much so is it true when the sides are even prepared to kill for it, forcing the world to have to deal with the issue when they'd rather be focused elsewhere? Now, one thing should become clear. It is not a coincidence that Zechariah chapter 12 is in the headline news today. And the events being played out on this Temple Mount area are the events leading to the next war between Israel and the Muslims. Without a question, this prophecy is being fulfilled right before our eyes. Now there's another side that I want you to see here in Bible prophecy because it is happening right before us. We see it in the headlines of the news. And let me point out so I can make the connection here in Daniel 9.27. It says this, and this is in reference to, again, this temple that's going to be rebuilt. Jesus shows us that in the New Testament. And God revealed to Daniel in the Old Testament. So in verse 27 it says this, and he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. Now, he, in the scripture, they're referring to an antichrist that's going to be coming. And, of course, his coming is going to be related to this temple mount, this temple that will be rebuilt. Let me go on. In the midst of the week, or in the midst of a seven-year period of time, I don't have time to go into why is a week called seven years, but it is. And in the midst of the week or seven years, he shall cause the sacrifice and oblation to cease. In other words, in the middle of the seven-year period, or as when you study the book of Daniel, you'll see that 1,260 days after this confirmation of this peace agreement, or this covenant, as we see in Daniel 9.27, that the Antichrist is going to stop these sacrifices. So that tells us, number one, Antichrist is coming. Number two, he's coming to East Jerusalem because that's where this temple is going to be built. The first one was there. The second Jewish temple was there. Now there's going to be a third one. The sacrifices will start again. That's what we're told here because in the scripture, we know that the Antichrist is going to stop the sacrifices in the middle of the tribulation period. So let me pick it up again. It says, even until the consummation and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. I found it very interesting that 18 hours ago in this WND report, it says the top cleric, Jews to build new temple for devil worship. Now the Muslims look at what the Jews are doing and they're saying that they're worshiping the devil. And once again, here's this issue in this report is centering around the third most holy site for the Muslims. Right there again, the Dome of the Rock. Tel Aviv, in a sermon broadcast on official Palestinian television, a well-known cleric claimed that in the future, Jews will build a temple outside the area of the Temple Mount where they will worship the devil. The Muslim preacher, Shaikh Khaled al Maghrabi, who gives classes twice a week in the al Ask Mosque, further taught, at the end of time, Muslims will seek out and destroy Jews wherever they are. Now, there is some truth in what he is saying. Not that they're worshiping the devil, but that the Muslims are going to seek out the Jews to try to kill them. We know when the Antichrist comes and he goes into this Temple Mount area, and at this point, in the middle of the seven-year tribulation, everybody is going to find out in the middle that this man who the world looked like he was going to be this major peace maker, turns out the fact that he is actually incarnate Satan. And at this point, in the middle of the tribulation, he starts to force his number 666 on everyone in the right hand and the forehead. This includes going after the Jews. It also 
includes going after everyone, and that includes the Muslims. Everyone who does not bow down to this Antichrist, this man who goes into this temple that the Jews are going to be building, will not be going just for the Jews, not just for the Muslims, but anyone who doesn't bow down and heed that he is God. That's what we see from Christ. That's what we see in the book of Daniel. So when the Muslim cleric is talking about the devils worshiping Satan, they're not worshiping Satan. They're just misguided thinking that they need a temple for sacrifices when in fact the Messiah Jesus Christ was their sacrifice and they don't need any more sacrifices. Never again. But they will find out the hard way and they will be running. And this part is correct what the sheik is saying, that they will be running. But the sheik doesn't realize that not only are the Jews going to be running, but he's going to find himself running. Because if he doesn't run away from this Antichrist person and bow down to him, he too will be killed. In his sermon Friday, Magarabi referred to Hadith, the accounts of Muhammad second only to the Quran foretelling the day when the Jews will hide from Muslims, but they will be outed by the rock and the tree, which will both exclaim, O Muslim, there is a Jew behind me, come and kill him. Now I'm going to skip down a little bit. We're going to start right here. It says, Magarebi stated the children of Israel will be forced. They will not concede. They will be forced to change their plans to build the temple inside the structure of the al Ask Mosque and will have to build it outside the al Ask Mosque. Now this paragraph to me is very, very interesting in the light of what Jesus tells us in the book of Revelation. Keep in mind the book of Revelation, this is a time period when the actual tribulation is going on. In other words, the Antichrist is already here. The temple is already built. The children of Israel are sacrificing the animals again, like we see prophesied in the book of Daniel. So what he is saying here, pay attention to this part right here. Because he's saying that the children of Israel changed their plans to build the temple inside the structure of the al Ask Mosque. In other words, not build it here, but outside of it. Now let me show you what Jesus Christ, the true God, the Messiah. Now this information about this temple, where it's going to be built, we see in Revelation chapter 11. Take a look at this, starting in verse 1. And there was given me a reed like unto a rod, and the angel stood, saying, Rise, and measure the temple of God. So we know the temple of God that he's talking about is that third Jewish temple. And it said, And the altar, and them that worship therein. So the Jews are going to worship in the temple, in the third temple that the Lord prophesied. Now verse 2, The court which is without the temple leave out and measure it not for is given unto the gentiles and the holy city shall they trod underfoot for 42 months in other words 1260 days so these gentiles that he's talking about these are the muslims that non-believers goes on and i will give power unto my two witnesses and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days clothed in sackcloth. In other words, three and a half years. And these are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. So here we have Jesus Christ telling us that this area right here is going to be built by the Jews. So as you can see here, this is extremely important because what we see here is is essentially what we're seeing right here in this sheik statement where we see the jews will build a temple outside the area of the temple mount so really what we see here is this muslim who was essentially telling us the very same thing that jesus christ has told us there cannot be two messiahs there's only one way I know that a lot of people out there say there's many ways to God, but there's only one way, and that way is through Jesus Christ. 
and Jesus Christ is God. And what God has told us and is given us information about this Temple Mount is the same thing that this Muslim cleric is saying, but the Muslim cleric doesn't realize that this Antichrist is going to be coming after everyone in this world, and he is the one who is deceived. Christ is telling us exactly what's going to happen, and this cleric is showing us the same exact thing, but he's got it twisted. Now, my question to you today is, would you believe this cleric, or would you believe what Jesus Christ tells us exactly what's going to happen? And I would most definitely rest with what the Lord Jesus has warned us about this Temple Mount area and where it's going to be rebuilt and obviously who's going to be involved with this Temple Mount area, and it will be the Antichrist. So let me make this really, really clear for you, putting these articles together and combining what we see from the book of Revelation. What we know is this area is definitely going to be major problems. It already is. We see that from Zechariah, the prophecy there. So that we know that the temple will be built in the near future. So as long as the Dome of the Rock is there, I could see hardly any way that the Jews would be able to put their third temple there at all, unless they did it side by side. Now, only God knows how it's going to happen, but there is that possibility when this man of sin, the Antichrist, comes, he could make a covenant with the many, which would be the Islamic nations, and those that are in turmoil over this Temple Mount area, uh, between the Jews and the Muslims, he could make arrangements that this temple, the third temple, may be built by its side. And that could be where Revelation chapter 11, verse 2, where the Lord said, but the court which is outside the temple, leave out and measure it not, for it's given over to the Gentiles. So there is that possibility, I would say a very good possibility, that's what the Lord Jesus is showing us. But the bottom line is this. The people, the Muslims and their clerics are talking about the very exact same thing that the scripture indicates about the last days. And again, it isn't a coincidence. You're seeing the Holy Spirit in action trying to get your attention to believe his word and the things that he is showing you. Welcome back, everyone. This is Frank DeMore with the End Times Research Ministry. Today I gave you a YouTube video discussing the Zechariah prophecy where the Lord showed us that Jerusalem was going to be a burdensome stone for all the people in the last days. And I showed you an article that it said almost identical what I read to you in Zechariah chapter 12. And so now I want to tie in another prophecy that came from Jesus Christ. And again, it's exactly what we see as combined prophecies, one in Zechariah chapter 12, the one that you're looking at, and another one that Jesus gave Paul the Apostle in 1 Thessalonians. Now take a look at this. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 3 and 4, this is what Jesus told Paul. For when they shall say, Peace and safety. And notice I put the peace and safety in the red because this, to me, is the most important part right now. And then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child. And they shall not escape, but ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. So when Israel's calling for peace and safety, does the Lord in this context tell us that there's going to be peace? No, he gives us the exact opposite. He says there's sudden destruction coming. Well, how is the destruction coming? In many of my YouTube videos, I just point to the Psalm 83 war where the Muslims that border Israel are going to attack Israel or when they're calling for peace and safety, which they're doing right now in Israel. But peace and safety is eluding them. Now, as far as bringing these two prophecies together, Zechariah and 1 Thessalonians, let me show you an article now where they had a report from Bai Ken Moon, who is the leader of the UN right now, and he's talking about Jerusalem being a burdensome stone, and when you listen to the speech, he talks about 
peace and safety and how Jerusalem is this troubled spot. And it's identical to what I showed you in both the scriptures, Zechariah and Thessalonians. Watch this video. And as you're watching it, I'll point out the scriptures to you so that you'll get a really crystal clear picture that the words of our Lord are being portrayed in the news. And most of the world doesn't make the connection, but they should and they could if they read the scriptures. Salam alaikum. Shalom. Uh, today... I'd like to speak directly to the peoples of Israel and Palestine about the dangerous escalation in violence across the occupied Palestinian territory and Israel, especially in Jerusalem. I'm dismayed, as we all should be, when I see young people, children, picking up weapons and seeking to kill. Let me be clear. Violence will only undermine the legitimate Palestinian aspirations for statehood and the longing of Israelis for security. To the youth of Palestine, I say, I understand your frustration. I know your hopes for peace have been dashed countless times. You are angry at the continued occupation and the expansion of settlements. Many of you are disappointed in your leaders and in us, the international community, because of our inability to end this occupation. And to the leaders of Palestine, I say, harness the energy of your people in a peaceful way to make their dreams and aspirations of reality. You have the right to live a decent life in dignity, respect, and freedom. I know that this is your goal. It is also our goal, but it can only be reached by establishing a Palestinian state living side by side in peace with Israel, not through the violent acts we have been witnessing. I urge the youth of Palestine, as the future of your people and society, to turn your frustration into a strong but peaceful voice for change. Demand that your leaders act responsibly to protect your future. Demand progress for a political solution from your leaders, from Israeli leaders, and from the international community. I'm not asking you to be passive but you must put down the weapons of despair. To the leaders and people of Israel, let me say, I appreciate your genuine concern about peace and security. I also understand the anger many Israelis feel. When children are afraid to go to school, when anyone on the street is a potential victim, security is rightly your immediate priority. But walls, checkpoints, harsh responses by the security forces and house demolitions cannot sustain the peace and safety that you need and must have. There is no so-called security solution. You, the people of Israel, as much as the Palestinian people, need to see a political horizon to break this cycle of violence and fear. The United Nations stands by you. We will continue to support all efforts to create the conditions for a return to meaningful negotiations. In this, we have never wavered. And to all I say, do not allow the extremists on either side to use religion to further fuel the conflict. Palestinian and Israeli leaders stand firm against the terror, violence, and incitement. Demonstrate in both words and deeds that the historic status quo of holy sites in Jerusalem will be preserved. Reaffirm your commitment to end the occupation and pursue a two-state solution 
by making changes on the ground. Nonviolence requires more courage and strength than violence. At this difficult time, let us say enough is enough. Let us stop the posturing and brinkmanship. Let us stop mortgaging the future of both peoples and the region. Let us get truly serious about reaching the only solution capable of durably stanching the bloodshed, the hatred, and fear of even greater conflict. That is the courage and leadership the peoples of this holy land demand and deserve. Shukran Jajilan, Toda Raba, thank you. Now also complicating matters in Jerusalem where this troubled spot is that Jesus talked about, there was an article that came out today also by CBN News under Israel, UN vote would make Western Wall a Muslim site. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, this is a picture, there's that Dome of the Rock that we talked about earlier in my presentation. This is the Western Wall. This is the wall that the Jews use and they pray at this wall. It's also called the Wailing Wall. And what this article is going to be telling us is UNESCO, a group of Arabs, Islamic Arabs, are trying to pass a law stating that this area also is part of this area, the Dome of the Rock or the al Asq Mosque, meaning Muslim. So what they're trying to tell us essentially is they want to strip this away from the Jews as well. Let me tell you something that will cause major issues and it will ignite tensions like you have never seen before if it ever goes through which i highly doubt but the point of the matter is they're discussing it right now and it just makes matters that much worse so let's get back to the article jerusalem israel the palestinian authorities latest proposal u.n resolution sponsored by unico claims that the western wall known in hebrew as the kotel is part of the al Asq mosque and thereby a Muslim holy site rather than the last remaining vintage of the Jewish temples. Sponsored by six member nations of, of UNESCO's executive board. Now I want you to take a look at these nations. Algeria is mentioned in the Ezekiel 38 war. Egypt is mentioned in the Psalm 83 war. Kuwait is not mentioned. Morocco and Tunisia are both in the Ezekiel 38 war. And of course, the United Arab Emirates are not listed there. But it says the resolution also claims PA ownership of Rachel's tomb near Bethlehem in the cave of the patriarchs in Hebron. The majority of UNESCO's 58 member nations have historically supported the Palestinian resolutions. For Bible-believing Jews and Christians, the idea that these historical Jewish sites somehow morphed into Muslim sites is nonsense. The Bible records that Abraham purchased the cave and the field next to it some 3,700 years ago as a family burial site. And you can see Genesis chapters 23 through 25. With the exception of Jacob's second wife, Rachel, the mother of Joseph and Benjamin, who was buried near Bethlehem, and you can find that in Genesis chapter 35, verses 16 through 20. So UNESCO's members, primarily Muslim nations, are trying to turn what for the Jews, which is their holy site, that last remaining part of the temples there, they want to give it to the Muslims. And of course, when we're talking about peace and safety, and we read what Daniel told us in 927 about this Antichrist making a covenant with many. Obviously, the covenant that this has to be made will be between the Jews and Islam, the nations of Islam, which will be many, and who knows? It could be these, some of these 58 nations. But the bottom line is this, more aggravation, more news pointing to the problem of the world, Jerusalem. East Jerusalem and that Temple Mount area exactly as it's supposed to be in the last days.